So what do we have today? A little unboxing of the B-Link C. Now I think it's called c uh, but I'm just going to call it C. Oh my god. Guys, I have been waiting for this for quite some time. I did take it out of the envelope. So let me show you the box itself. It's the B-Link C, as you can see. There's some words right there some there you go many ports and that's what I'm excited about I'll talk about that 4k Bluetooth and so this is the um, 2 gig 30 2 gig RAM 32 gig hard drive with the Realtek CPU now it's not my favorite CPU to use, I like the 908s, 912s, but you know what the heck, let's take it out of the box, but hey, let me smell this bad boy first, hang on, hold on, oh, oh, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, oh man, that fresh smell, I can't get enough of it, alright, so what do we got right here, we've got a little Manual? You want to call this a manual, folks? You can call it a manual. Whatever. Now, I want to show you some of these features on here. HDMI in and out. Oh my god, I cannot, cannot wait. And you can add your own hard drive. Oh, man, really? Wow. Alright, so we're going to set this aside. You know what, let's just get to the meat and potatoes. Let's just look at the C. We'll look at the other crap inside later. Oh, look at that, guys. Oh, man. All right. All right, before I dive into it, let's look at the uh, accessories. So first we've got this remote. Yeah, same old crappy remote. I would suggest uh, one of other remotes, like the... Um, AR remotes. You can see my remote review on my other video. So we'll set that aside. Power. Cable. Now it's different than the other B-Links because the other B-Links was just a square with the with the ends on one end. But this one um, seems a little little larger so that might be a bit of a problem for you depending on where you plug it in. Or set that aside. And then of course we've got the uh, short HDMI cord. All right, so that's for the accessories. Let me move the box out of the way and let's just take a look at the actual B-Link C itself. All right, for the front, we've got a, a display here for the time, I'm assuming. On this side we've got a full Ace SD card, not the micro. We've got a 3.0 USB and a standard USB. So the 3.0 is very nice to have if you're going to transfer some data. Okay. Well, this is the power, Ethernet, and um, digital out. Sorry, Ethernet, digital out. I'm just excited about this HDMI in and HDMI out. So you'll be able to hook up another Android box or any device and you can record on the B-Link C. And then this other end, nothing. Now the bottom, this part right here guys, with the holes in it, that's where you can put in a hard drive. Look at that. And you can just slip that hard drive right in. Now it's for a 2.5 inch hard drive and it's for a SATA 3, but I'm going to try just any old 2 point hard drive, 2.5 hard drive I have. Let's see, how do I get this back in? Oh, there we go. All right. So that's pretty much the outside of the B-Link C. So what kind of size is it compared to a standard Android TV box? Well I've got my Sunveil and my GT1 and as you can see 
it's almost twice the size of just a standard Android TV box. As for the side, I'm going to put this GT1 and you can just see that it is a little larger and the thickness is identical. Okay, so if you don't have an Android box to compare it to, let me get my tape measure out and let's just take a look at the actual dimensions because this is a larger so you know almost seven and a half inches it's coming out exactly at seven and three eighths and this way it is four and five eighths of an inch so that's the size of the box itself Let me say I'd like to thank B-Link for not giving me a free, not giving me a free box. No, I had to pay for this out of my box. You would think I'd get some sort of a free review box, but no, I had to pay for it. But that's okay, guys. I'll pay for it because I really wanted the B-Link C. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Oh, this is going to be good. All right, let's get to it. Let's look at the monitor. All right, so here's the C's uh, launcher. It looks just like the uh, GT1 and the Mini MX Light Home Launcher, except for this uh, weird HDMI in versus the Kodi. I would love to see Kodi instead of this HDMI in. Maybe I'll have to put the uh, GT1's launcher to see if uh, that'll work. Now, as far as a bottom navigation bar, nope. There is no bottom navigation bar. Well, that kind of sucks. Top. Well, we have a top navigation bar, but no bottom. Hmm, that's not good, but maybe with an update they'll have it. So let's see what kind of apps were was installed. Okay, let's take a look here. We got the Chrome as the browser, HDMI in, Miracast, the Google Play Store, the settings, huh? So Cody's not installed in the C. So is that good? Is that not good? To me, it's doesn't matter. I'm going to install it from the Google Play Store. And um, as far as settings, let's take a look here. Oh, so there is no like other settings like the GT1 where you would have to go into this type of setting, it just goes to this setting. So they don't have that first setting and go and then going into this settings, if you know what I'm saying. So, so the settings are a little different on this C. Okay, so as you can see what kind of uh, settings are in this settings. All right. So let me uh, grab this remote and hit the home button because the bottom navigation bar is not there. And um, from what I gather, the firmware 101 is not rooted. So let me stop this video right now and let me install the root. I'm sorry, let me install the firmware 102 to see if the root is okay. Oh, and before I do that, let me see, I, you know, this gray background, I don't really like. Um, so I'm going to hit the button. I'm going to have a customization um, video. And, um, you know, I'll go through this again. I've done it before. And, ooh, there's the blue background that I like. So that works, and that's good. Okay, well, let me stop this video and get back to you. All right, so I need to update this manually to the 102. So I'm on my PC and it said to download the exe file and the actual update. So there it is. There's my computer. And right next to it is the B-Link C. So 
right now let me see how I can do this right now it says install the exe file and open the file so I'm going to open the ex setup exe okay and I guess I have to install it I'll fast forward through this for you guys alright I guess we get an error for some reason let me try it as an administrator alright so now I guess I need to find the sample exe file so you have to run it as administrator so let me find the exe file and get back to you okay so I copy and paste that rmundexe file and there it is so now I need to install the HDMI box hang on there it is sorry I had it open already so now I'm going to put the USB 3.0 in the 3.0 Hold on. If you click open to import, let me see here. So I'm going to click open, which is down here. And let me find that file. Okay. Okay, there it is, 100%. And now I'm going to hook up the B link to this monitor and see if it's 102. So there it is, update 102. So it did work. All right, so I'm recording this after I did the update because it was a little confusing on exact steps I needed to do to do the 102 update now you know I, I clicked on the exe as an administrator and then I opened the image file and let it load and then this little icon guy that you see in the video comes up then what you do is you take a what I have is a USB 3.0 on both sides and you're supposed to put it in the USB 3.0 which is this guy here so basically you know I put this end here this end to the PC and then put the power in and then it started installing and when it was done I unplugged it and then put it in the monitor Okay, after the 102 firmware update, let's see if it's uh, rooted now. Let's verify the root, and there you go. Now it's got root access. So that is good news. So if you have the box with the 101, you need to update it to the 102 to get the uh, root properly installed. All right, let's check out some uh, other benchmarks. All right, so here's the benchmark numbers. Um, what I'll do is I'll put the other numbers for the GT1 and the Mini MX and the Sunvale so you can compare it to the C and so you can see the comparison numbers and see if it's something you want to purchase with the higher number. Um, I'm surprised it's not a little higher but you know maybe firmware updates will make it even higher. Okay let's do some other scores. And here's the DRM info 
A lot of things are not supported, so I don't think that's too good. Uh, once again, hopefully the firmware will fix a lot of this stuff, even though it's on 102. All right, let's continue on. All right, so there's the numbers for SD Bench to see if any of that um, information can be used for you. All right, let's continue on. All right, so there's the score for the N22 benchmark. And you can look at my other videos to see how it matches with the GT1, the Mini MX, and the Sunvale. Okay, so that is it for the all the benchmark numbers. Let me go to the home page. And what I did was I installed Kodi and SP, SPMC and see how it works on the 102 or to see if it even works. So here's Kodi 17.1 first run and there you go. So so Kodi 17.1 does work on the B-Link C. Alright let's see the SPMC. It says preparing first run and oh says uh, SPMC has encountered a problem. So doesn't look like SPMC is working for now on the B-Link C with the 102 firmware. So maybe the next firmware it'll work or SPMC needs to update whatever they need to update. So that's not that great. All right, let's talk about the HDMI in. So I'm going to use my sun veil. I'm going to hook it up to the C and see how the picture in picture and the recording works. So basically, when you turn around, you can see one that says out and one that says in. So for the in, I'm going to take an HDMI and put it in the in. And then the other end, I'm going to put it in the sun veil into the HDMI out. And that's how the setup is going to work. So from there, let's go to the monitor and let's see how it all works. All right, it's time to test the HDMI in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the sun veil. And you will see, there we are. Let me zoom in on it. As you can see, there's a little animation for the sun veil. And there's the home screen of the sun veil. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the sun veil. So let me zoom out a little more so you can see the whole screen. There we go. So basically, you could hit the record. Also, the output path I heard you cannot change. So I'm going to leave it as the picture is HDMI in. And so what I'm going to do, you can also click on the picture and there is the sun veil and then I'm just going to go back one and there's the picture in picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and put the video, one of my videos, so I don't get a copyright problem. And so I'm going to go into my YouTube Here, let me uh, make the picture bigger. It might help. I'll go to my channel. And um, I'm trying to flip back and forth with one mouse. So I'm going to go into my videos. And I'm just going to play 
one of my videos here. All right, hang on. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and um, back into here. So I'm going to hit record and say click OK to start. And now you can see it says recording. You can see how the time is up in the top right. And right now it's recording my video. Let me see here. Is my video even moving? Hang on guys. Technical difficulties. What's going on here? There we go. Let me fast forward here. There we are. All right, so now that it's moving, I'm going to go back into the B-Link C. And I'm going to stop recording. Okay, I just hit stop. All right, so let's try to find it in the pictures HDMI. So I'm going to use the uh, ES File Explorer. And there is pictures right here. And there is HDMI in, and there is my video. And let's take a quick look at it. I'll just pick, oh, I don't know, MX Player. See if it'll work with the MX Player. See, allow, can't play this. Hang on. Let me try this again. What about um, just the video player? And there you go. That's what I recorded. I'll fast forward. I think towards the end. There we go. So you could see that it totally recorded what I did. And um there you go. Yeah, so this HDMI in with the recording works very well. Final conclusions and thoughts. Do I like the B-Link C? Well, I do like the B-Link C. Um, my problem is the bottom navigation bar. And in the beginning, you know, it wasn't rooted. You had to do the update. And, you know, it wasn't the end of the world wasn't that complicated, wasn't that hard, it was a little confusing in the beginning but you know you sit there and you try it and, and it works and then it got rooted but B-Link still needs to do some work of the firmware update. Now my opinion when I first bought it it was kind of in its beta version so to speak and now it's with its fully rooted box it's feeling more like a a real Android TV box. A um, couple of things, another thing I didn't like was the front display here was pretty bright and there's no way to dim it. So if you're gonna keep it in the bedroom you know and you want to leave it on that might bother you. Also the clock on it is a uh, 24 hour clock versus just a standard 12 hour style in the front display. So you know, I, I don't know if you like that or not. The other things, um, USBs on the side only, not in the back. That's kind of a shame to me because, you know, if I have a USB dongle, I, I don't want it sticking out on the sides. Also, the SD card, I'd like the micro versus the larger one. I'm sure that sticks out. I didn't try that in this video. I definitely, definitely like the HDMI in and out. That is really, really nice feature with the picture in picture. I really like that. Also, the extra hard drive you can add, except for I didn't really figure it out how to partition it properly. 
Um, it was, um, I don't know if the NTFS was the right thing, so that I have to look into. Otherwise, guys, I would say if you really want something like this, get it. I'll leave a link in the description for you to get it. Leave a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.